You know, I've got a serious question for you guys. Does this bucket make my trasher look big? Okay, I promise, that's the only bad joke that I can think of right now for this video. But if I come up with more, I'll make sure I include them. But what we're talking about in this video here is gonna be sizing attachments appropriately for your machine, all right? So this is a 72 inch heavy duty bucket on a John Deere subcompact tractor, okay? And so what you're typically gonna see on a 1025R, you're gonna have a few options, you know, like a 49, 51, 53 that I've seen, the most common being a 49 and a 53. I'm not even sure they make the 51 anymore. But regardless, this is a 72 inch heavy duty bucket here. Obviously, it should hopefully look a little bit disproportionate to the machine itself. And so, you know, there's a common sense factor to all of this, and that's kind of the overarching theme here. But we'll go ahead and get to the nitty gritty as well and give you several ways to look at this on how you can size your, uh, your attachments or your implements appropriately to match the tractor. You know, so something that's drastically too small can be just as annoying and frustrating and inefficient as something that's drastically too large. Yeah, there may be certain applications where something that's on the very small side or on the very large side would really come in handy, but you know, the majority of the time, something like that isn't gonna work very well and it's gonna make it a worse experience for the operator rather than getting something appropriately sized. And as usual, if you like what you see here, consider hitting that subscribe button right underneath the video. Make sure to read through the description as well. A lot of helpful links down there, links to my website. Oh yeah, that's goodworkstractors.com. I can help you with a tractor like this, with an attachment for the front or the back, put together a whole package. I can help with financing and shipping too. Okay, so sometimes you really have a size restriction that is gonna determine the size of attachment that you want. And so a good example of this are folks that are gonna be going through the woods. You know, whether they're creating a trail or maintaining a trail or they need to get back to food plots that they have through the woods on the other end of their, uh, uh, you know, of their homestead. And you just, you can only fit much through there, right? So it's, it can be the same thing that said versus an open station in a cab tractor. If you only had this, this tiny little area to get through, you want to have as small and compact of a, uh, a setup to, to navigate through the woods. And, and I can tell you with firsthand experience, you know, getting some of those larger tractors with larger attachments is definitely a lot more of a pain in the butt than navigating through the woods with a smaller machine. So you look at these box blades here, for example, you know, these are going to be great for great uh, those paths and, and through your woods and everything else. But, you know, if you can barely get your tractor through there, then why would you want to have a bunch of extra width hanging off either side that's potentially going to hit a stump or a tree that you didn't see or it's, it's clearing, you know, brush instead of just maintaining that pathway that you want there. So that's another reason to kind of consider the right size attachment for yourself and just another angle to look at it. For whatever reason, snow pushers like what you see here are going to be one of those um, examples of an attachment that I get a lot more pushback on on the appropriate size versus most other attachments. <laughs> and I've got a hypothesis that it has something to do with wanting to get back out of the cold and into a warm house as fast as possible. That makes a lot of sense. But with snow pushers, what it really comes down to is weight transitioned into traction, you know, by way of your tires making contact with the ground. And that's the struggle with something like a snow pusher, you know, and why I am probably more on the conservative side of not really recommending these really wide, you know, pushers that are two foot wider or three foot wider than your machine, although I get a lot of requests for that. And so not only is that attachment that much wider, meaning it's that much more weight in itself, but it's also going to trap that much more snow in here that you're also going to have to push. And it's just that factor of, you know, I wouldn't say it's your engine that really has the problem with pushing that snow, but it's more of a factor of the tractor, the tires making contact with the ground there and having that traction to be able to push that snow along. And so for that case, I am typically going to recommend a snow pusher, for example, that is roughly the width, you know, kind of like the same way that your bucket is going to be sized appropriately, just, just a hair bigger than your machine. Typically, I'm going to do that with the snow pusher as well. There's certain exceptions to the rule, of course, but that's a pretty common one right there. Okay, so while these are facing up, these actually mow laying down like this, okay? These are brush hogs, rotary cutters, choppers, shredders, whatever call it by whatever name you want to, but I think we all know this goes on the back of a tractor right here. It's gonna be mowing fields, you know, something that you, you mow once a month, once a year, once every couple months, something along those lines. And these are a really good example of something for the back of the machine that is typically, typically going to match up with the width of the tractor as well. So over there, you're gonna see these smaller guys. These are for your subcompacts. I can get them in green, I can get them in gray, kind of like how you see this gray one right here. So they're all gonna match up with the machine. I will sell these for the subcompacts that are, they're four foot wide, okay? 48 inches wide, which is pretty much 
matching the width of those subcompacts. You go to a 60 inch like what you see right here, this is gonna be more for your three series, now even your two series though as well, which those aren't gonna be 60 inches wide, but they'll be within a few inches of overhang on either side, which is appropriate. You know, 72 inch for the four series or the, the large Grandel series as well, that kind of thing. So you kind of get the drift. Now there are some exceptions to this rule. We talked about the two series there. You know, those are really, what are they, 52, 53 inches wide and we're gonna put a 60 inch brush hog on there. But let's take an example here. Let's talk about the John Deere 3025E. Okay, this is a 25 horsepower tractor. Okay, it's gonna be about 60 inches wide. Now, an old rule of thumb, an old rule of thumb, okay, is five PTO horsepower per foot of implement. Okay, so five. So this is four foot wide over here, so you would want um, four times five. So that's 20 horsepower to be able to run a four foot. And this is five foot here, okay, so you'd want 25 horsepower to run a five foot brush hog. Now we're talking at the PTO, not at the engine. So that makes a little bit of a conundrum. What are you gonna do there, right? You're gonna get some feedback online about, well, hey, this says it needs 30 horsepower in order to run this attachment. It's only a 25 horsepower at the engine machine. What's going on there? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna run a 48 inch on there and not cover my tracks? Or am I gonna run a 60 inch here and see what happens and roll the dice? Don't take my word for this, but I'd encourage you to go ahead, look on the forums that are out there like Green Tractor Talk or the Kubota ones as well, or any, you know, any of the tractor forums that are out there. You're gonna see this question has been asked a lot already. And you know, if you don't see it, go ahead, ask it again. You're gonna get opinions from folks that have already done it. But what I'm typically gonna do, I'm gonna recommend the 60 inch for those. And I'm gonna say that because the majority of the time, the majority of the scenarios that you have, a 60 inch is gonna be just fine. It's gonna be the one-off situation or maybe the guy who is going to be doing this commercially on new properties all the time with different varying levels of growth, you know, really heavy, dense uh, stem counts or, you know, six foot tall grasses that are super thick and could bog down anything. There's gonna be certain scenarios where this is not gonna be the right one, but for most folks that are gonna maybe mow the same pasture, the same field, you know, at their, at their place, at their homestead, you know, a handful of times a year, a 60 inch is gonna be fine in a situation like that. Now, don't get me wrong, you're gonna get different opinions from that, but this is just my take on it. And I am typically on the conservative side. You know, so I had this sprayer at home today on my 1025R, hitting the lawn up, getting some pesticide on there, getting some growth regulator, a little bit of fertilizer on there too, all sorts of stuff. But anyway, it got me thinking. You know, I'm always talking about ballast weight. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you read the ballast weight guides. You watch the ballast weight videos that I've done. Very important to have that counterweight in the backside of your tractor when you're using your loader. It's a very big safety issue and people have died by not having the appropriate ballast weight. So you can't overstate the need for it. But it got me thinking, you know, I hate paying for dead weight. It's the, just the worst thing you can do, right? But sometimes you need to. But what if, has anybody done this? Have, has anybody used a sprayer for ballast weight, you know? Of course, this doesn't weigh that much in and of itself, but you fill it full of water or you fill it full of solution, whatever it is that you're gonna be using on a regular basis, and you have it there. And it's not just that dead weight, but it's an actual tool that's on the backside here. So any feedback on this? Anybody using those pros and cons? I'm just curious, it kind of came to me today. I don't know, what do you guys think? As you can see, this thing is quick hitch compatible, okay? It's got a handheld sprayer if you want to use it. It is boomless, which I like. I didn't want the big booms that are hanging out here. So boomless, it goes all the way up to 30 feet, feet, I think it is, for the spraying path. Or you can taper it down, do a lawn, so you can do food plots, all sorts of stuff with it. This is a 55 gallon. It's PTO driven. Everything you need. Oh, and if you're curious about one of these ag spray sprayers right here, I can sell one to you as well. I can even ship it to you. Go to goodworkstractors.com. Okay, so let's take another example. What we're staring at here is a six foot, a 72 inch wide landscape rig, all right? So let's talk about another way that you might want to determine the proper width of your attachment. So something like this, this is like, it's literally a rake. It's just kind of following along on the top of the ground, raking up debris as you drive around. So there's not really a lot of strain or stress being put on the machine. It's simply just following the contour of the ground. You're not trying to dig out roots or, or dig out earth really even you know you're just simply raking up the loose debris that's on top of the surface of the ground and so i don't really have any issue recommending a 72 inch landscape rake for a john deere 1025r i, I think it's a piece of cake for it. i don't think it's a challenging job i don't think it's an oversized attachment for it at all i'm trying to wait out that beep there in the background So anyway, the point being, now if we're talking a 72 inch rototiller for a John Deere 1025R, and I keep talking about the 1025R, it's just an example. You can do this with any model that you want. But I'm never going to recommend a 72 inch tiller 
for a John Deere 1025R. So you can look at it from the working width aspect of it. You can look at it from the weight of the attachment itself. The 1025R, what is it, picks up 700 pounds on the three point. I can't remember off the top of my head, but a 72 inch tiller probably weighs 700 pounds <laughs> anyway. So if it even lifts it off the ground, it's barely going to handle it. Not to mention, you know, 700 pounds is about half the weight, 50% of the weight of the tractor itself. And so it's just going to throw it around. Same thing with a 72 inch brush hog or even a 60 inch brush hog. You know, certain attachments weigh so much compared to a landscape rig, this probably weighs a couple hundred pounds where those huge attachments on the back end, they're simply going to make even if they do work, they're gonna make the operator so uncomfortable, it's gonna be just a, a, a terrible experience. And if we get beyond that, we talk about the five PTO horsepower per foot of implement, well, you just don't have it or anywhere near it <laughs> with a six foot tiller. Let's look at it from another angle here, okay? And so sometimes you're gonna have something for the front end, like pallet forks. It could be something for the back end too, but we're just gonna use pallet forks as an example here where the width is just kind of, it is what it is, right? You know, whether it's a light duty frame like this or a heavy duty frame or anywhere in between or above and beyond. But the point being is that sometimes you're more concerned with just the actual weight of the attachment of the implement versus the width of it. And that's the case with something like this right here. These are really light duty forks, okay? I call them the ultra light forks. They're, they're rated for 900 pounds. They're perfect for subcompacts. Honestly, I've done a video lifting over 2,000 pounds with these things. They're, they're built very well, okay? But they shaved out a lot of material here. They took off the headache rack. There's no steel up here. The point being is that it saves a lot of weight, about 130 pounds of weight. They're great for smaller tractors that don't have a lot of loader capacity to begin with. And I can get these for Skid Steer Quick Attach. I can get them for custom um, attachment styles too that just have to be ordered or the John Deere Quick Attach, of course. You know, or you can get the larger frames as well, okay? But you size them appropriately based on your lift capacity for your machine that you have. So that's another way to look at it. But the point being, the last thing you want to do is have some huge, heavy, think about this. So a John Deere 1025 hour lifts, what is it, 840 pounds to full height at the base of the loader, okay? This right here weighs 130 pounds less, but it still weighs about 200 pounds, just for a round number. So you think about that, you're lifting 200 pounds with your loader, or you get the bigger, heavier duty set, and you're lifting 330 pounds. And we're talking just lifting up pallet forks. You haven't even started to do actually any work <laughs> with it yet. You're not lifting anything besides just the pallet forks themselves. So why would you not want to save as much weight as you can with the pallet forks, you know, with the tool, that way you can put it in to the work that you want to get done. If you think about it, you know, when you get a front end loader on your tractor, this is going to set the kind of the table, okay, for um, how you properly identify the size of attachment. But you get a front end loader which has a bucket on it, okay. Now, typically, almost all of those buckets, unless you kind of custom order it or go against the grain, that bucket is going to be maybe the width of the tractor or perhaps just a hair bigger, you know, maybe two or three inches larger on either side. So a four foot tractor like this, again, a 49 or a 53 inch bucket option, well, this is about a 48 inch tractor right so a 49 or 53 you're talking a half an inch to a couple of inches overhang on either side just enough to cover the tracks if we talk about belly mowers underneath the machine as well something like a 1025 r you're going to have a 54 inch or a 60 inch okay so you have a couple options there and it depends on the attachment right but you can see there's nothing that's going to be you know eight foot wide attachment here on a 1025 r nothing that's going to be a little three foot belly mower on the on the back or underneath the thing you know you're not going to have a a three foot snow blade on the front because who wants something that doesn't cover the tracks right so if you get something that doesn't cover the tracks, well, that can be annoying for a couple of reasons, right? So for instance, if it's a belly mower and you're trying to mow along the borders of your lawn and the edges of your lawn, that kind of thing, and, and you have a mower that doesn't extend uh, beyond the tires, then how the heck are you supposed to get up there to it? Same thing if it's a finished mower even. And the same thing can be said with a bucket, okay? Or an attachment that goes in your front end, like a snow pusher, for example, if you're, or a plow even. If you're pushing snow along, you know, if you're driving over 10 inch deep snow instead of just plowing it along or moving it out of the way well what good is that you at least need to have something that's going to cover the width of your machine and if you think about it engineers should be kind of designing tractors all around you know from the footprint of it uh, to the hydraulic system and the engine size and everything else to kind of work together with the attachments that's going to be going on to it because the tractor itself isn't going to do a lot of work because you have to have something on the front underneath or on the back in order to accomplish the work that you want to do so it's that kind of thing that you don't really even, you don't even realize when you're shopping for a new attachment or you're shopping for a new tractor and you think, hey, it all kind of just came together here and well, I guess I don't have to worry about it because it just, it just matches up with the width of the tractor just a little bit more. That's just the way it is, right? There's a lot of thought that goes into that behind the scenes.
Hey, well, I want to thank you so much for watching. You know, hopefully this was helpful. It's something that I'm asked all the time, and I want to make sure I get as much of that information out there, things for you to think about. You know, don't take what I say at face value. You know, these are just ways to get your, only you can make the best decision for yourself. So it's just my opinion, kind of giving you, maybe steering you in the right direction, but it's up to you. Every situation is unique. So if you like what you see here, again, consider hitting that subscribe button underneath the video. Make sure you read through the description, okay? You can get cool things like this saw haul right here. It's a chainsaw carrier. It just goes right, it just clamps right to the side of your, um, your loader arm here. It's very cool, okay? Things like that in the description below or at my Amazon store. Always go to goodworkstractors.com. You'll see all my latest tractors and attachments there for sale as well. Thanks again for stopping by. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.